On this episode, we are hitting one of the greatest off-roading destinations in the world, and that is none other than Windrock Park. The group Venture Unknown is the host of this trip, and we are expecting 25 rigs to be present on this ride. We are all excited for the trip, packed up and ready to explore what Windrock has to offer. The ride there is a bit slick and snowy. We have started the drive back in upstate South Carolina, and we are meeting the other 22 vehicles at Windrock Park's campground. When we arrive at the campground, we plan to meet friends from the past rides that become more of family than they are friends. We discuss our plans for tomorrow and go to bed in the 35 degree weather. Here it is, 8 o'clock in the morning, 28 degrees sleeting, and we're airing down to go and destroy some of these trails. Or, some of the trails are going to destroy us. We haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm personally airing down to 18 PSI because I don't really feel like popping a bead today. The others are in the range of 15 to 20 PSI. To help you understand how fast someone had an issue, this is the trail that connects the campground to the park. At the end of the connector trail, there is a fairly steep drop that is icy and slick. This accident happened so fast the camera crew was not able to catch it. One of our guys had slid off the trail coming to the main entrance of the park. On the bypass trail, this trail is slick and crap. It's snowing and raining. You can't tell it's supposed to be melted. But you slid off, got ATs on it, they got mud. And they just got so slick he slid right off. Originally, we had hooked a winch line on a snatch block to the rear of the truck and tried to pull them out that way. That did not go as planned at all. The 5th Gen 4 under started sliding towards the truck and off the trail himself. So we called one of our guys, Dustin, that's in our group, to winch him out from the front. The team tries to go as fast as we can to open the connector back up and actually make it to the trails. Get the green truck, which we like to call Frankenstein because it's got a Chevy motor, Ford axles on a Toyota body, back on the trail. And we re-spool our winches and head to pay our passes. Just to name a few of the people on the ride of 25 rigs, we have Sean and Michelle Clark with Venture Unknown in that sexy FJ80 of theirs. Philip in that sweet Subaru Forester with a camping trailer. Max and the Silver Fourth Gen 4Runner, who is fairly new to the off-roading industry. Dustin and his new 4th Gen, and no, not the same Dustin that saved Frankenstein. Brad, one of the sweetest 5th Gen 4Runners I've ever seen, with his co-pilot Gemma, the dog. Ron with Appalachian Crawlers, and last but not least, Naveen and his Black FJ. We're doing Trail 2 right now, and it's, uh, it's proving to be pretty muddy out here. I've done it before, it's not normal. It's Speaking of mud, she's a slick one. Today, park rangers have warned us at the beginning of the trail that there is about five inches of snow and heavy amounts of ice towards the top. We plan to head up to the top of Windrock, locals call it, to see if there's a view like there is normal. But, the snowy conditions, we have no clue what to expect. We are already getting into some of the fun stuff, and my god, am I loving it. That's me up at the top just going along. Drew gets hung up right here, but there's nothing that right skinny pedal cannot get over. Remember what I said about it being slick? Watch what this did. I'm glad I left my seats the same way I got them. ever said to yourself, I don't need a rear bumper, this might change your mind. Right here, I am rubbing the crap out of mine. I'm 
I'm glad to be off that line, but once I got up there, that was pretty fun. All right, Drew, it's your turn. Let's see which way you take it. One thing we take extremely seriously with Venture Unknown is we make sure everyone knows the exact line they need to be doing so they don't break anything, hurt themselves, or even worse, kill someone. Driving, Drew. I'm sure you want some mud terrains now, man. <laughs> One thing about Windrock that is just so amazing is that there is never a shortage of mud. There is mud pit after mud pit after mud pit. If you come after it rains, oh, you're going to have a good time. just hit the elevation that that Windrock just turns into something magical I mean it is gorgeous what snow can do to any landscape really I mean it just completely changes the entire place and I'm thankful that I came to Windrock at the perfect time we received a call on our comms that Philip and the Subaru had blown a fuse after going through a deep bog hole so Philip jumped in someone else's vehicle and rode back to camp to get a fuse and come back to fix it so we waited on them, and in that time, we were able to eat lunch, meet all the new people in the group, and get to know them better and become closer friends. And a snowball or two might have been thrown. <laughs> Once we figure out Philip's situation, we then continue to head to the top of Windrock. One of my favorite parts of Windrock are all of the rock faces and cliffs on the trails. Leave in the comments if you have ever been, and if so, what was your favorite part of Windrock? The higher in elevation we become, the more breathtaking the view is. We are not even at the top, and I'm already stunned.
At this moment, the Venture Unknown team is about to do something insane. To get to the top of Windrock, there are a couple steep hills that doesn't seem like much, but when it's iced over, it becomes extremely unsafe and close to no traction is apparent. Venture Unknown comes over the comms and we discuss what to do and what not to do for our less experienced off-roaders. And even for the experienced, this is sketchy. I've been all over the East Coast exploring for years now, and I still get nervous. Ron and the Blue Jeep did a couple 360s trying to climb this hill. The pressure is on. Let's get it. My plan was to keep the momentum going into it, because I knew it was too slick to gain once on the hill. It doesn't seem slick, but believe me, it was. The camera crew had to be in the rigs and film there because it was unsafe to be outside, as it was nearly impossible to stand on. You can hear how crazy that motor sounds trying to get up this mountain. One thing we do for our group and other safety is make sure all of our rigs have a way of communication, whether that's ham or CB. We warn our group of anything that could be a hazard or if there's a vehicle coming up. close to the top of the mountain now. I've personally never been to the top of Windrock before, but I'm very excited. Judging Blake in the 5th gen, you can tell how icy she is. Okay, you good? Yeah, I had to take, I had to take a picture of the ground. Now it's just one small little drive away from being at the top of Windrock, and my god does it feel so good to have made it up here. This is what us four wheel drive enthusiasts live for. We set a goal and we accomplished it. We are at the top of Windrock with 25 sick off-roading rigs and 5 inches of snow. What else could a human want to live for? Have any of you guys drifted before? That black second gen Tacoma? That's my boy Chris, and watch that rock he slings towards my rig. That was a close one, Chris. If I had a supercharger, I'd be going faster too. 
Adventure Unknown is more of a family than anything. And there's nothing like being a part of a whole bunch of people that absolutely love to do exactly what you love to do just as much, if not more. It's something that, that we share all together. We soon line up after having an awesome time and try to make our way back down the mountain to hit some other trails. We then find out the way we came in is nearly impossible to climb up and get out safely. We find a new route and head that way. We made our way to trail 82 slash 83 for a night ride in the snow. If you know anything about that trail, she is not an easy one, even in the summertime. So adding snow and ice, we had a time. We tried to get up the second obstacle on 82 and one of our most capable rigs with a winch line on a snatch block couldn't do it. So with that being said, we spent a whole hour backing 10 vehicles down a steep icy hill to the bottom so we could head to camp and go to bed to rest up for tomorrow. We froze our butts off last night and I slept by the fire with two long sleeves on, three big jackets, two pairs of pants, and five layers of socks and still froze. But hey, the next day is here and with that being said, it's our last day before I headed home, and you best believe we're going to make it count. On this ride today, we are on pavement to get to the infamous train of Windrock, and we will wheel from there back to the park. Well, we've made it to the train, and sadly this is where we depart. We rode from here to Windrock to Nemo's Tunnel, but we will have to save that for another episode in the future. Unpaid would like to give Venture Unknown a huge thanks for hosting the trips we film. We have so, so much more planned. Here soon you will meet the host of the show, and I'll give you a hint. One of them is myself. Do us a favor if you wouldn't mind. Leave a like if you enjoyed watching, and subscribe for more episodes just like this. We hope you enjoyed watching this episode of Unpaved. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see us on the trails.